What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365 Geek. And today we're talking about Power Automate and OneDrive for Business. And we're gonna look at the trigger, which is when a file is modified, properties only. I previously covered when a file is modified, but as we saw in that video, the content or the direct content that you get out of it is not very useful and not very user friendly. So you get kind of strings with a bunch of different characters. Um, it's just not very useful. It's not something that um, a lot of people could be able to use, especially if you want to do, uh, do checks and things like that of uh, where the file is or who created the file, who modified the file, etc. So this action actually allows you to get that data out. So let's take a look at it today. So I'm in Power Automate. I've got my OneDrive for Business flow here, and in the connections, I can choose the OneDrive for Business uh, connector right here. Next, I can choose this bottom one when a file is modified, properties only. Just like that. It's first asking me, oh, sorry, hold compose action. I'll leave it there for now. Uh, uh, it's asking me for the folder uh, where this will be triggered, so we can specify where this gets triggered uh, and what data is, is, is triggered up. So if I choose the folder icon, I can then choose where this file goes. If I choose the arrow to go from the root to the next directory, I can then choose Power Automate, for instance. So this is my folder I'm using for testing, uh, and basically anything inside the folder is going to trigger this flow. If I show the advanced options, we have the ability to include the subfolders for that as well. So that means that if, if we set this to no, only, only files inside of this folder will, get tri will trigger this flow. Else, if we set this to yes, if we have a subfolder inside there and modify a file inside there, it'll trigger this flow. For the now, we just start set no, so we have no subfolders. <clears throat> uh, next, we can add some data into the compose step. So in this instance, I'm going to choose something like uh, modified by, uh, and we'll choose modified time. Uh, no. Do that, and then search modified time. Uh, so modified by and modified time. So we will save this and then we will test it out. So we'll click on test. Uh, I'll perform the trigger action and we'll save and test. And then what we will do is we will go to my OneDrive. We've got a few things here. So we've got this test Excel book one. What we're going to do is we're going to change the name to um, uh, Fantastic. Uh, fantastic data source uh, because Excel is a fantastic data source not really um, uh, a lot of my job is taking people from Excel to business application systems so uh, I, I, I I love Excel for what it does but it has a few uh, few issues when you try and use it as a complete business application so the flow has run successfully uh, there is a slight issue with this rendering sometimes so I'm just trying to go back and I'm going to open the flow room and we can see the when the file, file is modified. We can also see the JSON here so we can see the um, the, da the data of it. So the fantastic data source is the name. Uh, we have the name, no extension, the path. Um, so the, the path does look a little bit weird still, uh, but this is just because it's the way OneDrive encodes it. So we've got drives and we've got a unique ID. Then we have root, and then we have the, the proper path and things like that. But at least we can get this data out in a, in a semi-good way now. So if I expand the compose action, we can see it says Matt Collins and 2020-06-13 and the time. Uh, that is the time in UTC because um, most things inside the Power Platform like CDS and things like that run in UTC. Um, and I'm currently in British, uh, British summer time, so it's actually 2.23 for me. Um, or 221 for me. So that's uh, that's how this works. So this is a cool action and we can we can use a lot of these things. So things like the um, the file extension, the, the name note extension, or we can get the extension name and stuff like that um, is really handy. Um, and we get the ID of things, so we can use that later on as well. Um, so this is really cool, really powerful. Um, and I love this. Um, I think I'm, I'm still not 100% sure about why you would use the other the other um, trigger over this one because this tends to have data um, that's a bit more usable. I think that's just if you want to trigger it and then not not need any of this data, you can use that one. Else, you can use this one if you need to get some of these things out, or if you need things to be a bit more encoded and a bit less on display, you can use that one over this one. 
possible. Um, if you have any, any further information on this, let me know in the comments down below. I love to learn new things and then teach people new things. It's one of the reasons why I do all these videos. It's like I love learning and I love teaching. So uh, let me know what you use this for in the comments down below uh, or if you have any other information about any of these connectors uh, and any of these triggers. It's always super cool to learn, so let me know and let everyone else know. If you did like this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, that would be much appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you next time.